Welcome back to The Rundown. Let's turn now to the world of culture. A and little a, bit of breath of fresh indeed. air, I think, that is much needed. Yes, indeed. Uh, a new art exhibition is bringing together Australia's top contemporary artists to Israel for the first time. The show, called Tracks and Traces, is taking plot Part is taking place, excuse me, in the southern Israeli city of Beersheba until February, and it features paintings, videos, installations, and more. Our culture correspondent Maya Margi went to take a look and filed this report. They come from a land down under, and for the first time, they're here together in Israel. Nine of Australia's leading contemporary artists are featured in a new exhibition at the Negev Museum in Beersheba called Tracks and Traces. The goal of the show? To present a different side of Australia to an Israeli audience. Many of the artists participating are of mixed heritage and some are Aboriginal. In Australia, the, the first peoples are really coming into prominence. There's some wonderful artists. That Anglo, stereotypical Anglo-Australia that people often have in their minds, like people have a typical, stereotypical view of Israel because what they see on the television at night. So I decided, and uh, initially, that the exhibition had to be about breaking down those stereotypes. The Negev Museum worked together with the Sherman Contemporary Art Foundation in Sydney to create the show. It was staged to coincide with the 100th anniversary of the historic Battle of Beersheba, in which Australian troops, along with soldiers from New Zealand and Great Britain, overcame German and Ottoman forces. The battle was a defining moment in the British takeover of the Holy Land. But the art on display here is less about the past and more about the present. Like the photographs and videos of Christian Thompson. My father's Aboriginal. Um, my mother is of English, Irish, German and Sephardic Jewish heritage. So I really draw on all of my different heritages and bring them into my work. In his video work titled Dead Tongue, Thompson sings in Bijara. <laughs> It's the language of the Kunja nation in central Queensland, and one that is no longer spoken by almost anyone. The language works are really based on a very simple concept that, because our language is endangered, uh, is considered extinct, that if the, the language is still being spoken, then it isn't a dying language. And I use the art context as a site to archive and preserve language. Danny Malore also looks at the relationship between indigenous and non-indigenous Australian culture. Like Thompson, Malore's of mixed indigenous and Anglo extraction. His incredibly detailed landscapes look at the fraught colonial history of his native land. Australia is also a very complicated geopolitical space. And so there are some sensitivities which you know are parallel or have parallels to Israel. But then, in a way, each place is unique. Explorations of identity and memory that connect Israel with the realities of Australia today. All the way from the jungles and deserts down under to the sandy dunes of Beersheba. Well, joining us in the studio now is our culture correspondent, Maya Margit. Maya, I have to confess, I know a little bit about art, but I couldn't, other than Norman Lindsay, who they made a movie about called Sirens, I wouldn't be able to name an Australian artist, but it looks like there is a rich visual culture there that should be better known. I think that's the goal of this exhibition, is to get people an introduction to contemporary Australian art, because it's so far away, Australia, and it's so disconnected from some of the Western world. Um, they have a really strong relationship with East Asia, and that's one of their biggest markets. Markets. But I think the goal of this is to show that Australia is not an Anglo-centric country as many people think. It's not homogenous and there's a lot to explore. And of course the Aboriginal side of it, which is we know some of their visual culture, but it seems like it has been being utilized within the Australian artistic tradition there. Yeah, that's what some of the uh, what the artistic curator there told me. She said that basically Aboriginal First Peoples art in Australia is very, very popular at the moment, and many people are of mixed descent. Basically, in Australia, you have people who speak about 300 different languages across the country. It's a very, very mixed kind of society, and about 26% of all Australia is uh, people born overseas. So they're very very heterogeneous. So are they trying to make some sort of parallels between Australian and Israeli history? Some of those things you say sound a little familiar. 
Yes, they are kind of commenting on, uh, you know, the colonial heritage, the British colonial heritage, because as many people know, uh, you know, Australia started out as a British penal colony, uh, and then it developed into a very complex society with many issues. So they aren't trying to say that it's the same thing as what's happening in Israel, but they are trying to point to the complexities of the social issues and show how the stereotypes that people might have about Australia or about Israel are not correct and how you can learn about is it, different things. Is it in Beersheba because Australian troops liberated that yes. city during World War I? That's how they found their bridge to connect Israel and Australia because they were trying to find look for a connecting point so this is what they picked they picked the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Bishop mm -hmm. all right Maya Margie thanks as always for bringing that that much needed breath of fresh air and this time I think a little small tribute to our several Australian journalists right here in our newsroom outside these studios we're gonna